let's get started. And I mean, I don't really have to introduce these brothers, but go down the line, let them know for whoever might not know. I, um, my name is Chef Raekwon Lex Diamond, Lewis Rich the Third, Starky Starky, Capadonna, AKA Cappuccino the Great, Master Kill, Allah Mathematics. All right, and today we're gonna uh, be discussing, uh, focusing on only built for Cuban links, but before we even get to that, we got we gotta talk about enter the Wu Tang Thirty Six Chambers. But before we get to that, I want, always wanted to ask y'all. Um, I remember when Rizzo was reminiscing on the intro to "Can It Be All So Simple." He's talking about 1987. What were, what were each of y'all doing in 1987? What we was doing in '87, we was in the street, running around, selling drugs, getting fresh, traveling. You know what I mean? Doing a lot of traveling to different boroughs, going to parties all over the. You know what I mean? Like anything that was hot. We wanted to be near it, you know what I mean? Around that time, definitely, you know, you had what? Union Square, you know, uh, Latin, Quarters. Latin Quarters, all of that. Rooftop. Rooftop, you know what I mean? Like, Brooklyn was the place to be for us back then because we liked to do a lot of shopping, so we would go downtown Fulton and all that. So we was just basically urban kids just really moving around. Like, we never liked to stay in one spot, though. But back then, you know, crack hit. You know what I mean? It was a phase that everybody was going through. He's running around high, dusted, smoking cracks and weed, and just polo down. No doubt. <laughs> you know? What, what, what was the vibe like? Describe for people, what was it like here in Staten Island in 87, though? 87, it was, like it was fall. Yeah, that's what I see. Crack. Man. It was just about getting paper, looking fly, looking sharp, throwing darts, you know, going to school the same way. We took Word. school like that too. It was like school was part of rap for us, you know what I mean? So that's what we did. Um, just just got paper, you know. Got zooted, got educated, studied, through raps, you know what I mean? And just hung out all day every yeah, day. It felt like you was free, like it wasn't really no problems. You know what I mean? Even if the cops was out, it just seemed like you would just whether you got high, you would still fly, and you just felt free, like. You couldn't wait to come outside, you know what I mean? Just to see your boys and to get back into the same activity that you did last night. Breaking day on the bench, you know what I mean? Breaking dawn, you know what I mean? 40. I mean, yeah, 40 Rank ounces. And, you know, you know, just <laughs> getting in, just back. getting into stuff though. But it was like it was like the good old days for us. You know, then you had the best music out there at the same time. You know, you had Kane and Rock Kim and every this is all the greats was just, it was just all balled up into one. So that's what made 87 really a glorious, in 88, glorious days. It started from 86, though. Exactly. That's when it really got popping. Popping. That's when it. That's yeah. when it first came, when, when we started thinking about long, fat chains and long, fat ropes and Rakim and Eric B and Slick Rick and everybody, you know. So it was a big influence on our time. And at that time, like, soul music was still in. You know what I'm saying? So we was like, we them soul babies from that era. The we 80s the last and all era. that. Yeah. Them 80s babies right there. So, so when did the rhyming come in for y'all personally? It always started. Been there. Been there. It started like it started before that. Early 80s or something. Yeah, it, yeah. Started, it, probably started, it probably started like maybe like a year after Run DMC came out. What, what year they came out? 84? Nah, well, it came out earlier like than that, 80, but it started 80, like 81. 81. We was rhyming around that time, though, but it wasn't, it was just for was fun. Like, yeah, but then, you know, 84 was a year for me, you know what I mean? Going to school, my man's Lee Robin, rhyming and stuff like that in the lunchroom. But then it just, you know, as years went on, it just got real. Did it, did it really get real when, when Protect Your Neck, when y'all put in that money to press up that single word? Were y'all about to go full blast, or was it super half real. in, half out? Super, super real. real. That super. Was, that was a fish shoot. That was That's a stamp. That's what it was a fish shoot. That's yeah. where the stamp was uh -huh. That was stamped. the beginning. That was the beginning of a whole new era when, when we did that, and it was over after that. You know what I mean? And we knew it was going to be over. Yeah. What, was, what was the recording session like for that? Everybody had to put $50 out. You know what I mean? Get your money up, yo. Boom, boom, boom. And, uh, and do what you had to do. And brothers came up with it, and he's all in the studio. Had to lay our verses down, you know, and 
it was history. This, this is the version that, that everybody heard the same as when you were in the studio and put it down, or did was did RZA kind of? I can't really. I think it's the same though. You know what I mean? I don't know because some brothers be having like two dots, two rhymes, and you know what I mean. You don't know if they picked that was the rhyme they put on there, and, you know, or the other, you know. But um, it just it just was what it was. All right, so so you get you get this you get this deal with uh, with Loud Records for the single album now, but it's like, it's like eight of y'all split the pie eight ways. That's not big money. So right about that. <laughs> so 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 how long was it half in the streets, half in this music game? You know what I mean? What you mean? Cause, because we're once once um, once you were signed allowed, did y'all leave the streets completely, or were you still? I mean, we still dabbing. Without I'm, giving anything away. You no, know, I did what I from. did. You know what I mean? But you know, streets was over the back while, then anyway. Yeah, he was going on his way out, but we were still in them. I mean, at least I know I was still doing what I had to do though. But uh, it was serious though. But before we even got with loud, RZA had shot that tape, protect your neck shit everywhere. You know what I mean? And he went to Russell and all, all these guys was like, nah, it's not going to work. It's too many of y'all. It's too many of y'all. It's not going to work. This and that. He went to uh, Warner, everywhere. You know what I mean? But Steve was the only one that said, you know what? Okay, listen. I'll give you, because we want to create a control over our shit. You know what I mean? And he gave us the, the right deal. He was like, and you know, I'll let you go solo. Get y'all shit together, y'all go solo, do what y'all gotta do and shit like that. So and he he had no money. He said at the time he ain't had no money. You know what I mean? But we went because he gave us what we wanted. You know what I mean? The money came after that shit. You know what I mean? So or anybody else had shitted on us at one time because they said it was too many motherfuckers and it wasn't gonna work. And I and I respect Rizza for that because he made the right decision and uh and we history now. Trying to think back to that time, it was definitely the the uh, death row era with these these big club sounds, bad boy era, if you want to call it that. But y'all came sort of as the antithesis to that with the stripped down beats, hardcore rhymes. Was that something that was purposefully done, or this is just this is just what y'all do? It's what we do, natural. Yeah. All that was natural. I mean, one thing about Staten Island niggas is like we're a combination of all boroughs, all in one. And I think at that time when we was rhyming, you know, Staten Island had their own flow. They own everything, you know what I mean? And it's like all we did was just be a part of our environment to the fullest. Like like Cap was telling you, it, it was like, yo, we were still kids. We were still going to school. We, we might, you know, I remember, I remember going to school and saying, all right, I missed one day. Then I missed three days. It's like, all right, three days ain't bad. Two weeks. Next thing you know, two months, I'm like, how am I telling my moms this shit? You know what I mean? But we were still growing up as kids, and like he said, finagling. There was a lot of things going on in our neighborhood, so Staten Island had their own way of delivering their rhymes. And our rhymes is fresh from cats in the neighborhood that just was freestyling, and you know what I mean? They was party doctors, you know what I mean? Blip brothers, brothers that you know that this is what they do. You know what I mean? We was young students just watching them coming inside the rec room and watching how they put their flow together and they wordplay and all that. And we used to sing them songs in the neighborhood and then it just it just hereditary passed down to us. So Staten Island always had their own delivery of, 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 of rhyming. Did you think this Staten Island sound would get as big as it was? Yep. We, we, we was cocky Hell like yeah. that. We felt that. We came in to crush niggas. We came in, we came in looking for um, Def Squad them niggas, because they had Headbanger. Yeah, we know we had Protect Your Neck. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean? Though. They had a crew, and that's yeah. what it was. So we really came in after those dudes. You know what I mean? But when we came in, they fell out. You know what I mean? No disrespect just, to Death Squad. Oh no, no, no. Those are my. Come on, I love them. But that's what it was. It was, it was competition to us. Like yo, who's? Cause we was, we was Dart Masters. Early, you know what I mean. So when we looking at, you got Eric Sermon, you got Redman. They just murdering every track they got on. They was like the streets to us. So we know when we came in, it was gonna be some shit. You know what I mean? And 
when we got on, it just so happened that, you know, I guess things fell apart with them and, and just we was just still here. But that's not saying they was our focus, but that was our competition only, out of everybody. Only because at that time, you know, when you think of so many guys in the group, you think of them. You know what I mean? And we always used to say, ah, right, you see Red Man, we got a Method Man. You see EPMD, you got Ray and Ghost. You see this one, you got, you know what I mean? So we was always trying to match their group integrity because we felt like they was they was the shit. And they was the shit was back the then. Shit. You know Hell what I yeah. mean? It wasn't it wasn't personal, like, yo, we coming in the beef with nah. them. You know, but they was hot. So at the time, we just was worried about making where we from hot. You know what I mean? They was from Jersey. They was getting it in, Long Island and all that. So, you know, Staten Island was was still a mystery to everybody. So we was already planning our targets and our attacks on, on the game. You know, that's what it was at that time. What made our shit so ill, though, is we had that combination of, of all the brothers and we had all of that witty, unpredictable talent and natural game. It wasn't all about hardcore rap at that time or softcore. It was just about, you know, who could say the slickest and the illest shit. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, drop a jewel, some education up in there. You know what I'm saying? We we was the first nine born. We was the ones, you know, besides Rakim, that that brought knowledge to the game. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and gave, you know, the, the, the younger brothers and sisters on the block some identity. You know what I'm saying? How to look into they self and study they self to find the best quality within they self. You know what I'm saying? And then at, at also, we had a combination of of styles because we had Staten Island and then a lot of us from, from Brooklyn like Master Killer and then Queens so you know some of the best rappers Biggie Smalls you know Run DMC and all, all of them you know that's Queens and Brooklyn right there so when you combine all of that right there it's like come on man it, it go beyond style after that now you're dealing with chambers <laughs> you know what I'm saying and that's how you get them 36 chambers right there, man. The flavors just keep coming at you. That's why they can't mess with us, because it's like each one of us got a chamber individually. You know what I'm saying? And then all together, it's like we the 36 chambers too. You feel me? No doubt. I want to ask, Master Killer, you, yes, we always hear the stories about how... Uh, Rizzo would throw on the beat, and everybody had to compete to get on that joint. You couldn't just say, yeah, I'm on this track. So that said, I know Mystery of Chess Boxing, that was, that was basically your debut, right? No doubt. Like, how, how was it getting on that, getting that, that, was that your debut rhyme, basically, on wax? Can you speak right. on that? Right, well, you know, basically, when I, when I met, you know, my brothers right here, you know what I'm saying, it, as far as talent-wise, you know, they was already... Like you said, you know, like they said, they was already doing what they had to do. The 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 into the the thirty six chamber album was basically already put together. You know what I'm saying? Um, there was like one slot left in, uh, on Mr. Be a Chess Boxing. There was a few other MCs in the in the uh, in the studio that night. You know what I'm saying? And um, it was basically like, yo, who's who's going to throw the slickest dart or the illest dart to to make that slot? You know what I mean? And um, you know what I wrote you know, spoke for itself, so I'm right here. Did, so were you Wu-Tang already? And that, that just kind of made it official? Like, how how did it work? Like, Well, I'm Wu-Tang because I'm family, you know what I'm saying? But as far as this business is concerned, yeah, that, that sealed the deal. You know what I mean? No doubt. Right. So let, let's take it, move forward a little bit to only be for Cuban links. Bray, was, were, you, were you always slotted as like that third soloist after... Method Man and, and the, the late old dirty bastard, rest in peace. Um, I was afraid at that time to do a, do a dolo, you know what I mean? I, I always came into this whole Wu-Tang compound as a family, as a team player. So I wasn't even thinking that far yet, but I knew I had my own chamber because everybody around me was like, yo, you rhyme this way, you got your own, your own flavor. That's how I even got the name The Chef. But um, make a long story short, I wasn't, I didn't feel like that was something I was excited to do because I was always for the family, you know what I mean? If Wu-Tang, you know, we was reigning back then and, and we knew at the end of the day that this guy was gonna come first, this was gonna come next, this was gonna come next. And you know, when it was just my time, it was like, I, I, I wanted to do it, but it wasn't, it wasn't my, 
what I wanted to do, really. You know what I mean? But being that we was, you know, I guess people was loving what I was doing, it was a request. So now, you know what I mean, it was, it was something that I had to do. And I already was saying to myself, okay, well, this is my style right here. I'm going to bring in, you know, that mafioso, that mafioso rap slash, like he said, that 80s baby flow still, you know? You said that you never really liked that mafioso rap term, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Nah, I mean, I love the principles of it, but I wasn't never stuck on it because, like like Cap said, we used to master flows. Like, like one thing about Wu-Tang, we used the type of cats where we went in, if you said this word, he couldn't say that word, or anybody couldn't say it because you said it. You know what I mean? So it was more about being, you know what I mean, dynamic with your mic, you know, and really just getting to the point to show everybody you an MC, you a rounded MC. See, you know, I knew how to do this, but at the same time, you know, we might have been, you know, rocking the flow or something. This might have been just about the flow or the style or the rhyme, you know, and at that time, like I said, when I was making Cuban Links, I already knew that, okay, I'm going to just give y'all what I love, the shit that I love to vibe off of too. And, you know, back then, looking at a lot of mafia movies, a lot of good movies, a lot of movies with principles involved with it, and I felt like that's how we was living in the streets. You know what I mean? I, I used to be one crew. You know what I mean? I never, never jumped from crew to crew. You know what I mean? Always stayed with cats that, even to this day, you know what I mean? I got 30-year relationships with. You know, so we always was like brothers from, you know what I mean? Like, we didn't have no father, so all we had was each other. None of us really had fathers. You know what I mean? Out of maybe 30, 40 cats on the block. You know what I mean? So not 30, 40 cats running around every day chilling. You know, you break it down, maybe seven over here, ten over here, five over here. But we all became brothers within each other. And, you know, like I said, anything that you see that I'm spitting is only because of the experience of all the individuals that I was running around at that time. So that's why we was like, yo, it's about family. Family is the most important thing because if you ain't family, then, you know what I mean, it's only but so much love we got for you. Real quick, y'all, y'all, you went to Barbados to start recording it, right? What happened that y'all left out there? <laughs> we got kicked out of Barbados because we was more or less caring about the, the maids. And, you know, like, like we go to these different places, and you'd be surprised how you see people get treated. You know what I mean? And when we happened to be out there, it just seemed like the hospitality wasn't... It was there, but the people that was being... Was, was like really Straight showing slavery, us love. They was getting treated there. a certain kind of way. And we didn't like that, you know what I mean? So we was like, why they, why they treating them like that? Like tips couldn't make these people smile. Like, you know, go to give them like $200 tip or something, but you can still see something on their face, like what's the matter? You know what I mean? Certain things like that. And, um, messed up, so they's fucked up. Yeah, they, you know they just mean? was like, yo. They even wanted, you know, we had fatigues on. They ain't even want us with the fatigues on. <laughs> you know what I mean? They want to, yeah, I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't, I think you they- You talking about the, um, the hotel? In, in Barbados, yeah, in Barbados. You know what I mean? Even with the music we trying to write, they complaining. Everybody was, You yeah. know what I mean? So they put us out at the wild. And that's when we went to Miami and we wrote all our music in Miami, came back to Staten Island and recorded Cuban Links. Did y'all have, did y'all have the beats with y'all or y'all? Yeah, we had beats. Yeah, we had, we had the beats. We had the majority of the beats up. And, and we uh, went when we was in Miami too. We was like really, like really making it happen, happen. Like when it was time to come back to Staten Island, we might have did like maybe like three or four songs, but everything else was like like carved out out there though. Now what what made y'all implement the killer in the joint? And did you ever get your killer tape back from man? Hell no, hell no. That's see, that's one thing about you know family and brothers. You know we take shit from each other and don't realize we taking it, but. You know you don't get it back. It's like a lighter. You pass your lighter, you ain't getting it back. Unless you be like right after, yo, give me that lighter back. You know what I mean? So, oh, that's real life though. But, you know what I mean? Back to what you were saying, it's like we was just having fun, man. You know what I mean? We was just trying to escape poverty in a great way and try to make something for the future of our families. You know what I mean? Not only for us, but everything we was always doing back then was for the cause of, of the family. Let me let me play the um the intro to links. Now what what made y'all have a, a narrative 
because the albums before it, it was just like joints, joints, joints. This definitely had a story. What what made what inspired you to present a story for the first time? It was it was just like I said that was going on around our lives at the time. You know, we looked at it like we done did everything, we done tried everything, we done in the streets doing this and just doing everything to win. You know what I mean? Anything that we felt like was going to really help us, that's what it was about. But this particular project right here was the gusto. We already knew that this shit had to be a classic. It, 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 ain't, it wasn't hoping to be a classic. It wasn't hoping to be dope. It was supposed to be. You know, and when Ghost was saying everything, you know, all that wasn't... That wasn't premeditated. That's once he get up in the studio. That's how he is. You know what I mean? He get up in there, he get to talking, and you know what I mean? That's what he talking at the time. So it was just all about our livelihood at that time. Yo, this the last time, man. You know what I mean? I keep doing other things, and I ain't getting to that level of winning. You know what I mean? But this shit right here better work, and it got to work. And you know, all I was just saying is like the same thing. Like, we going to make something happen with it. We ain't going to just, you know what I mean? get somewhere and just fall back down again because that's how we were. We, you know, you know, a couple of times you might throw a lick in the street and then you up and the next thing you know, a couple of months you down. So when you've been on both sides where you had it and you lost it, it's like it really doesn't mean nothing to you no more but to try to get it and keep it now. So, you know, it was just all about, yo, holding on to something that's going to be strong and, you know, my eyes was always about being legit. I wanted to be legit. I wanted to get out of the street. Type of kid, never had a job. My last job might have been a summer youth job. You know what I'm saying? So anything that could just tell the cops, listen, I could stand in front of my building. Like, I got a job. You know what I mean? Like, that was the main thing for me, though, too. But at the same time, we was in that life. We was around it. And we wanted to escape it in a great way and, and do something positive. Let me play one, one other joint. Just a hobby that I picked up in the lobby. <laughs> Ladies All right. Me black so, yo, what, what goes through your mind when RZA throws on that instrumental? Shit. We had to take that shit. We took that. We had to go to Barbados with that. You know what I mean? We picked out a lot of beats before we left. You know what I mean? And that, when that shit came on, was like, y'all right, that's in the bag. We take that one because it's just, that's how it is. You know what I mean? That sound right there is what we're looking for. And, and it was just one of those shits. I mean, that, that beat sounds like nothing, like now, like ever. So that's real shit. That's real hip hop. Yeah, anything that at, shit. At, at that time, anything that RZA put his finger on at that time is just yeah. crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like... Italy spaghetti beat right there. He was, that was pizza. Shit was jewels. Morning star. You know what I mean? It's nothing but jewels. It's like everything, he, like he said, touch was like, it just turned to gold. And we just knew like from criminology to all that shit was like, okay, all that's coming. And we try to make every song, every song a fucking hit. Like it could be a single at that time. You know what I mean? That's what I think what made that Cuba Link shit a real classic too, because we ain't, each song, you know what I mean, is so dope. That's how we plan this shit to be. You know what I mean? Nothing less. Not just an album cut. Now nah, we don't want an album cut. We want singles on every song, and that's what it was. But Donna, was that was that the first joint you were on? Yeah, that's Sidiana? that's the um the Cuban Links album, the first one. That's where I made my debut. You know what I'm saying? I came in on um. Ice cream. I did ice cream first. Came in, did that. Took me about 10 minutes. I had went in the studio. Um, Rizzo, that's when Rizzo had the studio up on the top of Wagner College in the basement. That studio got flooded out. But before that, I was up in there. I heard the track. I went up there with Golden Arms, and I was just listening to the song. It was just um, Ray and uh, Ghost Verse on there. It wasn't no hook or nothing on there. So, you know, Rizzo asked me if I wanted to throw... Uh, you know, some bars up on there, and I, I, I denied, I declined. I was like, nah, I'm, I'm good, I'm just coming through, you know, checking out the progress, see what's going on, and show my face in the place. He was like, nah, nah, I really, I really want you, you know, I think you should get on this right here. It's like, I can hear you on there. So I did my little verse right there on the spot, and then Meth came in about 10, 15 minutes later, 
and dropped that hook on there. Next thing you know, in two weeks, we was doing the video for that. You know, to my surprise, they had picked that as a single. I wasn't really even really ready for none of that, but that's how I made my debut. I came in on that ice cream, on that ice cream vibe. We did that joint. We shot the video up in Harlem and, and, and some of it in Queens, the, the majority of it in Queens in the Coliseum. After that, the rest was history. You know what I'm saying? I did like two more joints on there. I think I did uh, that, that ice water joint right there. And uh, what, what else we did? A Daytona or something like that. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I was happy, you know, that they chose me. You know, Raekwon, all, all praises due to Ray for letting me come out and be a part of that Cuba Lynx album and Ghost and RZA, you know what I'm saying, checking for me when I came home. And that's what's really good. After that, I dropped the, um, that Pillage album. Yeah. So, so Ray, I'm going to put you on the spot. You, you didn't like Ice Cream at first, right? Never did. I like the beat, though. You know what I mean? And I like the hook. But, it, but at that time, like Go said, we was just going hard right there. You know, we was really representing that box of music at that time that we felt like this shit is just built for, for real niggas, niggas that go to jail, niggas that kill people. Like, it was just the negative, but still a positive in it, but a negative. Like, I was rhyming for drug dealers, keep it 100. Like, look at this shirt right there. It says, I roll with God, killers and drug dealers. That's why we called it, that's why we called it only, because it wasn't for the whole world. It was only for people that could relate to that lifestyle at that time, that Tommy Hill ice rock and shit. You know, we was wearing jewelry for a long time because in our neighborhood, you know, we was always in a neighborhood where drugs was big. You know, like, you know, in Ghost Neighborhood, you got, of course, you know, you got the old school cats out there that really, niggas is knockout artists, but they smoke dust and all that shit. So, you know, these are, these are motherfuckers that'll take your coat off your back and be dusted as hell. You know, and then in my, and in my neck of the woods, it was like all drug dealers, like Jamaicans, Guyanese, you know, they was all about hustling and, and making a way for themselves and, and demanding that respect. So just having both of these, these kind of environments just made us who we are. Like, we are really a product of that. You know what I mean? And at that time, that's all we knew. You know, stay fly. You know what I mean? You better have some good product. You know what I mean? Even around that time, we might have been, you know, you know, I, I could probably say I was sniffing blow probably like 16, 15 probably. It's like. kind of early, son. We was already grown men, you know what I mean? With fly, slacks on. Already coming out, you know, you know, good, good silk shirt on. You know, slacks, you know, ironing your shit every day, waking up. You know, we was Mock men. We was, we, yeah, all that, all that. It's going to school like that. <laughs> play, play another joint. How, how many other skits you got in the bag? Because you was rolling around with a dat, right? I know you got shit in the stash that's got to be. Got shit everywhere, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? That skit right there, B, it was like, like Ray said, niggas was fly niggas. You know what I mean? When I seen, I, I seen the clocks of them niggas from where he come from. Shark skins and clocks and shit. When I seen those shits, it was like I had to get in the game. You know what I mean? But it's just that on that shit, it's like, you know, our, we, we have vivid imaginations. Our shit's just like, our imagination is real colorful. You know what I mean? We colorful kids, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, when I'm just looking at the shoe, I'm just seeing colors. You know what I mean? And that's why it came like blue and cream. But by the time we got to the Iron Man album, when you see all those wallabies up there, it was like, Yo, I had my Chinese man out here paint those shits like that for me. You know what I mean? And and <laughs> that's how, you know, the Wally King pin the Wally. That's how all that shit just came into play. But it's just like, we the motherfuckers, man, when we see shit, we know how to flip shit. I don't give a fuck if it's an ill bedroom set. You know what I mean? We know how to turn it up. You know what I mean? We know how to paint those. You know, certain motherfuckers don't know how to put their shit together. They wardrobes together and this and that and the third. But see, we got that eye that know it looks fly. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, shit, oh, word, that's how you doing it? All right, boom. And and that's just that's what type of brothers we are and shit. So that skate, we were just painting pictures. You know, it wasn't rehearsed, co-rehearsed, none of that shit. Shark biters, biggie skit, none of that shit. It just came. Whatever was being said was just being said. 
and now it's that, and we move on and shit. You know what I mean? And that's how we do. You know what I mean? We paint it just like how we get those songs together and like, oh shit, how the fuck you? Yeah, nigga, that's what it is. Since you brought up Shark Biters, did, was it a case of you felt that cats weren't paying homage to, to the stuff you bought? Like y'all oh, bought nah. this style to the nah, game? Nah, 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 nah. Shark Biters, we was, I was 25, yo, going in. You know what I mean? So at that time, I had a bunch of goons around me. I just, we didn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? So what was said, what was said, you know what I mean? Sideways, like a sideway dot. You know what I mean? And um, and, and we even give at that we didn't give a fuck on how a nigga took it. That's why I said at the end of it was like, ah, right, well, how are you gonna take it? Then fuck it. And that was it. You know what I mean? But um, all due respect at the same time, like you said, when you were young and you just wild and doing what you gotta do, a lot of times you don't really realize this shit until like years later. Like yo, man, you know, cause you as you mature, you know, you be see shit. Like, damn, I was just sitting there, you know what I mean? Whatever, but it was what it was at that time. You know what I mean? And that's it. You're very um, incarcerated Scarface's brother. Yo, what? You got, you got to explain how that just came together. I wrote that shit in 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Came in Wizard yeah, Studio. He, he, he the fastest. Yeah, they call, the me, fastest nigga. they call me the fastest nigga. The only nigga that write rhymes on milk boxes. <laughs> Cereal boxes. He'll bust a box open and just write <laughs> on the inside of the box. Write on real quick. Paper bags. He just do shit for years. Fast, though. Fly shit. Um, I mean, you know, I came, in the, I came to Rizzo House that day, and he was in the basement. He was having his, his moment, you know what I mean? Because Rizzo, one thing about him, he lived in his basement. You know, it's like he had his kids up at the top, but he always would be down in his basement. And it's like almost like he lived in there. You know what I mean? Because you know, of course, sometimes we go through things with our old ladies and all of that. And I guess at that time, he was just chilling down there. Like, you could tell he ain't washed up or nothing, hair all crazy, but he was in his zone. And when I came down there, he played that beat. It was around the same time that um, I think we had did criminology the night before if I'm not mistaken. So that's what actually made me come back the next day because we was in the zone. And once he put the beat on, it's like my mind just started moving like that machine again. And I just, I just wrote according to what I felt. And he was like, yo, you need a hook. And automatically I was thinking about all the people that's not around us no more, all our friends, you know what I mean? We was losing a lot of friends at that time, you know, getting caught up, getting incarcerated. You know, and at the same time, you know, Scarface, that movie was like, it was like I was street drug, drug dealer Bible back then. You know what I mean? So I just was like, yo, I want to talk about the cats that, you know, I want to make this hook dedicated to cats that's not here, but still let them know they're here. You know what I mean? Like I said, this whole album was just designed for street cats. You know what I mean? Like cats that, that that's felons and... They ain't, they ain't gonna make it, you know what I mean? They not gonna make it, you know what I mean? It's like you sitting around 20 cats and be like, how many of us is gonna really make it? So you know that song was like just dedicated to them to keep their spirit up, you know, especially cats behind the wall. You know, we had a lot of friends, like I said, locked up at that time, like doing, doing real time, you know what I mean? Like 10 years and up, you know what I mean? Like my best friend, you know what I mean? He actually did like 10 years, you know, this is somebody that I really feel that raised me in a great way as a as a brother, not like a father figure, but like a brother. And he wasn't here, so all these cats was on my mind, and I just was like, "Yo, I gotta, I gotta give them something too. I gotta do something for them." Was it always a solo record with just you on it? Was it always a solo yeah, record? Was it always I just you on it? Is it yeah, I, I was vi I was I was I was zoned out. I did three verses that day. You know what I mean? And RZA, he was like, "Yo." You did what you had to do, you know what I mean? And we just left that song like that. But even when we was making, even when we was making Cuban Links, I didn't never take it like it was a, a solo project. Because every project that we was making at that time, it was always a Wu-Tang album to us. It just was his chamber, his chamber, his chamber, you know what I mean? And that particular chamber was something that they knew was my style, you know what I mean? And I needed everybody to support that. And, and I don't think it would have been the same if everybody wasn't doing it, you know what I mean? So I never really tried to take the credit for it alone. 
of course, me and Ghost, we was Batman and Robin on it, but you know what I mean? You had brothers like Inspector Deck, Kappa, you know what I mean? Killer, everybody came through and, and, and put that support in it and made it more stronger because they felt like this was all levels of Wu-Tang getting even bigger. So like even when Ghost said, when we ain't care about what we were saying and how we were saying it at that time is because we started to raise a stake in Staten Island. You know what I mean? When you come from a borough that nobody don't mention, when you going out, you hanging out, and they think something sweet, it's like, you know, it was, it was a revenge move for us to get back on. So when things was happening, into the 36 Chambers popped off, you know what I mean? That was successful. Return of the 36 Chambers, Old Dirty was successful, Method Man. It was like the plan was going according. By that time, we was already, we was already professional. We was already in it. But our confidence was just, it was probably bigger than the Empire State Building at that time. Yo, Master Killer, what's up, man? How, yes, how'd, you, how'd you get on these, these records? Are you just laying in the cut? Because I'm thinking of Wu Gambinos and Glaciers of Ice. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> pardon me. At that, at, when this movement, for all those albums in the beginning, I can honestly say, you know, I was still like a student of the game. You know what I'm saying? I mean, these brothers was already like in mode already. You know what I'm saying? I mean, my style basically came from all these brothers, and I took a page out of, out of all of their books, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and made it my own. You know what I'm saying? So at that time, you know, the move, I mean, the train was just, it was moving, you know what I'm saying? And when something was on, it was hot, you know, RZA was like, yo, you know, get on this or, or, or do this, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I always kept, kept one in the head, you know, and... Um, just let that just let that be born, you know what I mean? Yo, Matt, you you uh you're an accomplished producer yourself. So what were you picking up on the way? Um the Cuban links was going on at that time. It, it was like I was just really strictly DJing. But it's like um I was hanging out with RZA and I, I just happened to see like when he did the ice cream. And and it's like the transition of it when I first heard it from when he started to when he finished is what made me want to become a producer. So I, I went in the room, I started asking him questions, like, yo, what's this, what's that? So he was like, yo, this is the ASR 10. Started showing me some things. So after that, I went and caught me an ASR 10, you know what I mean? And I just started, just started trying to make beats, you know? And it's like, um, took a minute, you know? Caught on kind of quick, though, and yeah. So with how, with, how did y'all go about choosing singles? We didn't never choose them like that. You know what I mean? We just making them. You know, sometimes they say you got to go with your heart. You know, and that's what we was doing at that time. Like, we, we was looking at each other like we all knew we all were stars. It was just a matter of how to play chess and really come with the right thing. You know what I mean? And we was, gonna, we was letting the fans choose it after that. You know, the fans made the decisions that encouraged a lot of our decisions. You know, like I said, when Method Man album dropped first, we knew Method was on fire. From the Protect Your Neck, it was like he was our guy, you know what I mean? So, of course, that's our brother, you know what I mean? If he gonna take us to the, to the championship first, to the first one, let's go. And that was a collective decision, and that's how it was back then for us. See, that's why I said it all, it all revolves around family, because that's how we was moving. If we felt like he was the one that got to come out first, for him to come out next and for him, and you know what I mean? Everything was precisely dealt with. That wasn't premeditated. I mean, it was premeditated, I'm sorry. Yo, on, I was wanting to know, on Meth vs. Chef, did you feel the ways when it, it kept, when Brizzy kept that far where you kind of lose your spot on the beat and then you come back on it? Nah, I mean, all that was fun, you know what I mean? You know, me and Meth, we always be arguing back then. We was like, kind of like the, the funny ones in the crew, everybody see us arguing, bugging out. So it was like, it was like just a, just something like, man, first chef, like, you know, it was a way of getting out our frustration, but it wasn't even like we was like, yeah, we battling. It was just a perfect concept for that, for that beat at that time, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I was just having fun. Like I said, it wasn't nothing personal, it wasn't nothing aiming at him. It was his style versus my style at that time. And even to this day, I say he won. I tell him to his face, you got me on that one. You got me, you know what I mean? But Meth was, he was a bad man. 
you know, very, very talented at that time and, and still talented, but it was just something about them braids, though. You know what I mean? Like him and RZA with, the, with that hair, you know what I mean? So we like, keep that hair. Whatever y'all do, keep that hair, you know what I mean? And um, they, was just, they was just dope, man. Like, I, I just knew we had the strongest team at that time in the game. I kind of like seen it ahead of time, for real. Now, y'all kept counting your um, your outside features to a minimum. Like, back in that era, I can only think of maybe a couple of Mob Deep joints that I jumped on, like the right back at you. Um, were, 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 were cats not reaching out? Or were they scared to rock with y'all? What, what was the... Just just in general. Because it nah. would seem like cats would just be thirsty to get y'all on tracks, but... Nah, it was we was all one one particular family at that time. Like, Mob Deep was signed aloud as well. You know what I mean? And big pun, you know what I mean? So at that time, it was like, we felt like we was the the broke Def Jam crew over there. You know what I mean? You had Def Jam with all the, you know, Def Jam is like a first class ticket. You know what I mean? We was riding coach, but we had we had comfortable seats though. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Just me and their mom, all of us. Yeah, we just felt like misfits. You ever seen the Santa? You know the shit that be coming on TV with Santa Claus coming to town? And yeah. all the misfit presents is like, <laughs> they don't, nobody don't want them. Like, you know, <laughs> word. But, you know, we just felt like we was our own division that wasn't really at the level that Def Jam was. You know what I mean? At that time. And we knew it was a bunch of talented cats. But we just knew each other. We just see each other vibe, yo, feeling y'all music, yo. You know what I mean? Yo, come to Queens, Ray, yo, what's up? I'm with it. But you got to come to the island, too. So in a way, it was like, yeah, I want to go see if y'all really live the way y'all say y'all live. And the same for me. You know, they, you know, I brought them to my neighborhood. You know what I mean? Sat up in a Chinese restaurant. You know, cats is swinging their little things. And, you know, it was just, like I said, we was young. Like Go said, young, dumb, full of cum ass niggas. That's all. Verbal intercourse. Well, before we even get to verbal intercourse, where is this? Uh, y'all yeah, recorded a, another song, right? It wasn't just verbal intercourse. I had another song with Nas for the album, right? This just has nah, been. nah. Yeah, yeah, probably two verses or whatever. He was trying, like, like Nas. You know, well, first of all, you know, Nas is somebody that we respected back then. You know, as a solo MC, and, and we just felt like at the end of the day, like. That's the way to handle your business as a solo MC. Like you could tell, he was mad smart. He had knowledge. He had flow. He was he was representing the street life. You know, like Cap said, that was all of us within one one or two ways. You know what I mean? But Nas became a real cool friend of mine, and um, I invited him to come to the Allen. You know what I mean? This was after I think we did I for an eye, right? Did we do I for an eye before that, right? Before we did verbal. Yeah, but make a long story short, I brought him to Staten Island and brought him to the studio where everybody was at and said, you know, Cats was happy to see you come through. And, you know, at that time, we wasn't big on features. We didn't care about that. But if we respected you as an MC and as somebody that's going to be influenced, it's like we already seen it, like X-Ray Vision, you know. And um, even back then, Nas was even wanting to manage, like asking Cats, you know, you know, like, yo, what's up? You know, manage me or whatever. You know what I mean? But it never it never escalated to that because we was more friends than anything. But um, he came in the studio, played the beat. He didn't have a problem with the beat. I was like, you like that? You like that? You know what I mean? He's like, yo, it's hard. But he didn't know what to do or what to say. So, you know, now I got to play A&R now. You know what I mean? Ray got to be, all right, bust some darts in the air, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yo, he started getting in there and started saying different rhymes to certain things. That's why, like he said, it was probably more than one rhyme. But when I heard that through the lights, cameras in action, it wasn't nothing to talk about after that. It's like I already seen it. And, and after that, when I threw my dart, 10 minutes, whip, whap, whap, just because I was so happy that he did something great as far as within our camp. You know what I mean? Like, it really made me feel good. So it was like, wow, I can't wait for the people to, to really rate this shit. You know what I mean? Because the beat... Like I said, RZA was just on fire. I mean, seriously, you know, when you think of his legacy back then, like, how many producers you know could do five classic albums back to back? In a row. In a row. It's never been done before. He never, yeah, you know what I mean? 
I mean, he had, he had a couple of his little soldiers or whatever around, but it wasn't never on a professional level. Like, RZA was just, he just loved beats and he loved music and he was just in his prime at that time. You know, he never came out. He wasn't a hangout fella. So it's like when he was just making all that shit, it was like perfect, perfect. Like, he was just in his own. Were, were you recording songs for Iron Man during this process too, or was it all nah, it was strictly his shit. Strictly his shit. That was it. It was all about his shit. Then we just knocked that shit out. Was it was it always a guest star and role? It was what? Was, were you always the guest star? Like when when was it like yeah. yo we gonna make it guest star and Tony Starks? Nah, because I was damn near almost almost on every song. You know what I mean? So you know, that's just how I went. You know what I mean? I played my part. Ray was there. You know you know whatever whatever that we was. Come on, nigga, we don't went to fucking Miami and got kicked out of Barbados. So it's like, you know what I mean? We there, nigga, we getting it in. And that's how I came. And that was it. But uh, yeah, nah, I ain't man had nothing to do with that. That was just after shit. Yeah, that was after. That was after. Are there any uh, lost cuts that haven't been released that y'all got that are hold, y'all are holding back? A lot mm-hmm. of shit got caught up in the flood. Yeah, right? a lot of shit got drowned out. Rizzo you know had I mean? a flood in his house. Um, like maybe like two years before the album came out, so he lost man yeah. shit. Like he, lost, like he lost, he lost songs it. or just he lost beats. It. When he lost that shit after Cuban Links or before it? Yeah, right, right around there somewhere. Right yeah. around that time, yeah. Yeah, right he lost Iron a lot of out. shit. Like he lost a lot of shit, a lot of fly shit too. But you know what it is? It's like coming out of that house. That's the balance of life. Hey, yo, Lord. You feel me? Pardon me. It was like two floods, right? Morning Star Road and Morning Star and Michelle Court, right? Oh, Michelle Court, yeah, he right. Two floods. You feel me? All beats down a drain. You know what I mean? So it's like, for all the good that happened, it was like that had to happen for the balance of life. You see what I'm saying? Every time something goes good, something always go fucked up. You're never going to have the whole fucking slate and think you're going to enjoy it without having to feel some type of pain. That's just how life is. So I had to look at it like that, like, okay, God, <laughs> I understand what you're doing here. You know what I mean? But yeah, so, but like he said, yo, Rizzo was fire. He was the motherfucker that, that took us there. You know what I mean? Even when probably we ain't had the, the belief all the way. He just got up every morning, jetted to Manhattan, took care of business, and he's so intelligent. He's like one of the most intelligent brothers I, I know. You feel me? And handle his business. And this is where we at right now. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, a, a, a laws first. But without him Rizzo being that vehicle, not to say we wouldn't be where we at, but it had been hard as hell to trying to, you know, be on some Wu-Tang shit right now without him. You know what I'm saying? So this is real. There wouldn't be no Wu-Tang without the Abbott. That's right. I agree. So that's it. Like, how, like look, looking back at that time, like, y'all, y'all are all individuals with strong personalities and you know like you have your own opinions like how is he able to make it go because we 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 believed in him you know once once you deal with somebody who you feel has enough knowledge and enough confidence and credibility to to take us somewhere we just felt like everything that he believed in we believed him and sometimes that's the that's the greatest way of being a winner is to be confident you know, you can have nothing, but at the same time, if you sit around with brothers and everybody is in the same frame of mind, you're going to win. And that's what it was. He was the general. He was the one that we felt like, you know, he was the, he was, he was the Phil Jackson. You know, on top of it, because we already seen that he went out there and became successful alone with even accomplishing and do a record. Because you got to remember that Jizza and Rizza had a deal back then. We was still in the street. These brothers is coming back to the block with, with their album covers. And to us, that was like trophies. That's like bringing home a championship ring. Just to get on. Just to get a record deal. That was something that we admired. But he was so smart. You know, he had knowledge of self. The way he carried himself. You know what I mean? He was a respectable brother. And um, he was just one of them guys that we was like, yo, we believe you. And everybody said, yo, we're we going to sit in the back. We're going to be the passengers. You're going to drive. And that's how it was. 
I always want to ask, when did y'all all get knowledge of self? Because y'all, uh, it's all, the rhetoric is heavy in your lyrics. And a lot of people, when they first hear the music, they didn't get it. But then when, when, they, when they keep playing it, they, they begin to understand, you know, the supreme alphabet, the mathematics. When did it come into your lives? Well, it came into my life in like, um, like 87, 87. Like around like 85, my, 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 my brother's uncle, that's when he woke me up. You know what I mean? Stop eating pork and all that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I started becoming aware around in 85. Yeah, around 86, 87, same thing. Yeah, I mean, knowledge is infinite, you know? I mean, one of my enlighteners is uh, my brother right here, Law of Mathematics, you know what I mean? He's a brother who was already well-educated when I first started studying, so, you know, I don't dip from too many wells, but I had some good teachers. It's one of them right here. Was it always just natural to implement it in the music? Oh, it was shit. natural. It was natural because it was a way of having some kind of knowledge and, and walking around not lost because it's so easy to, to, to be led in the wrong and hard to be led in the right. So our neighborhood, it was so much going on, you had to either be one way or the other. You know what I mean? Either you was a smart cat or you was a respected gunslinger or somebody that they wouldn't dare violate you. But you know what I mean? At the same time, it was just we was thirsty for knowledge because we had fell out of school you know, in our, in our graduating years, you know, but you got to remember that time, you know what I mean? You know, right now we in our, you know, we in our 40s right now, you know what I mean? I'm 41 right now. I ain't, ain't ashamed, loving it. No shame. You know, but at the same time, it was just about having a direction in life and, you know, just being able to say, well, damn, if you ain't going to school, at least have common sense and, and know how to carry yourself and know why you in these situations that you in. You know, so knowledge was very important to us at that time, and it really made us a man. It, 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 grew, it made us grow up real quick, real quick, because brothers would come on the block and ask you things. You know what I mean? Um, what's the total square, you know what I mean? Total square miles on the planet Earth. You know what I mean? And, and if you really look at it, it's 196,940,000 square miles on the whole planet. You can read that in, in a, you know what I mean? You can find out, and it's going to say that. So it was just about being eager for knowledge. You know, and at that time, RZA was just super sharp. You know, it was him and the Jizza, super sharp. That's how they got their names. If you think of RZA, all you, all, only thing that's missing is that is the A because of Razor. You know what I mean? And the Jizza, the same thing. He was a razor blade, too, at, at, at delivering knowledge. And to us, that was very important in our role where we was at, you know what I mean? Yo, Ghost, was, was you the first one to use Wu-Tang as slang? Yeah, right? I brought the name to RZA through the movie, though. Through the, uh, the inter, I mean, at the um, Silent Verse Wu-Tang. You know, at that time, he never really, he never seen it, so, you know, brought it to him, bugged out, you know. Riz just turned it in into the, in, in, like, we gonna make it a crew. You know what I mean? And one thing led to the other, and this is how we all, is under that umbrella. Mm. I ain't even know that shit. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, oh, shit. When, when Cuban Links first dropped, were uh, was there anything y'all wanted to change when you first heard it? What you mean? Just, just uh, in like a, a, like a rhyme you might want to do over. Or... Nah, oh, man. Nah, I mean, you Mash know, that shit. We was, we was we already fucking. We was already it, heavyweights baby. right there. Let me there. tell you something, man. When we fucking made that shit, man. We was listening to that shit in Vine's fucking millennium. We fucking hit a deer. Smashed the fucking deer real quick. Deer snot all on the windshield. You know what I mean? It just it just was like, oh shit. It was like a grandfather deer. Nigga had big horns and all that shit. It's like his eyes are still like, on the, on it the windshield. It was like, you Look know he was the grandfather. Like, he was the grandfather, like, grandfather deer. Yeah, B. So it was like, when we made that shit, yo, we just made that shit, man. And it was no take backs, no nothing. It just... It just what it was. It was real shit. Give it to the people. And that's it. Yeah, nigga, what? And to the next one. He talking about me? the dead thing because we yeah. was actually, we, we was on our way to go Jersey. through. 
We was on our way to go do an interview somewhere, and we was listening to the album, and I had the crib. By the time the fucking ice driving. water came on, we smashed the dead. Driving soon like the, this, soon as this shit listening to the music, dig, dig just came dig out of came nowhere. In. Boom! We was that like, dude. "That's the music. That's the." That music. was it, B. That was it. So we ain't changed. I wouldn't even change that shit. I feel sorry for you know what I mean, but I don't know where the fuck he went. But yeah, he you know, that's that, I mean, that was the energy though. You know what I mean? It's like the millennium was fucked up and all that. But oh, it tore the car. You know, yeah, B. That was it. So well, <laughs> that's it, B. All right, so let me ask y'all this: Cuban Links, Iron Man, Supreme Clientele. Which one? Like you, yo, man, those are all our babies, B. You just like you trying to tell me like, yo, which love seed you like the most? One another, yeah. Which one of your babies you love? Shit, like they are all like they like Ray said, they just different. At chambers, elements, but still the same glass of water. You know what I mean? So, because it all comes from the same thing. So, I don't know. You know what I mean? This is it. I, those are all, all my children. You know they just took that off, right? What? All, all my, my children? children? Yeah, it's gone. It just must have went off. It then. just went off like two days ago. Oh, no more. shit. See, y'all no ain't more. no cats. We looking at the stories yeah, and nigga, all that. Watch stories, nigga. Ted General on. Hospital is all like, that shit. Yeah, no more. Niggas been on for like forty-one years, b. <laughs> yeah, word. So it's, it's, uh, that's what it is. It's that's like that. Luke and Laura shit, right? All that shit. They was yeah, hell yeah, nigga. Word. So you know, they all these albums is our babies, man. They they come from us. We make them, we write them, we produce them, and it's like that's what we gave birth to. You know what I mean? That's how can we take pride in. A lot of shit, all the shit that we make, we try to get ahead and make it as perfect as we could, raising them and making the makings and all that shit. So when y'all get it, it's like, oh my God. So basically, when you see these records and you hear them, it's like y'all looking at our, reading our mind. What came from us, like, oh shit, that's what he gave birth to, man. And, and, and that's it, from the beats to the rhymes to everything, because we had to sit there really and write these fucking songs, B. And it's not... You know, Ray might write rhymes in 10 minutes. It might take him a, a couple of days or whatever. But long as it come out right and that's, we get the fucking job done, man. You know what I mean? So, you know, writing is no joke. You can sit there and write a bullshit rhyme, but we think about a lot of the shit. That's like when you got a lot of Obama atomically, Socrates philosophies and our prophecies can't define it while we dropping these mockeries. Lyrically performed on robbery, flee with the lottery, possibly they spotted me. Shout out to it's Spectre like, Deck. Who the fuck says that? That's the hardest shit in the game right there. Boy. You see what I'm saying? It's like, who the fuck says that? Scientists motherfuckers say that. Tang member. You know what I mean? And like Killer said, we take a page out of each book from everybody. Like, I had to sit back and look at these niggas when I was coming and, and had to just be like, take all of that shit, whatever I could take, and build me. You know what I mean? To say what I say and shit. You know what I mean? Everybody, like, damn, yo. And that's what we do. And that's what made this shit so fucking powerful, B. You know, and as a family, like, for nine, ten motherfuckers, ain't nobody never do it like that. With everybody being dope. Everybody, like, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's, it's just crazy. But, you know, all praise is due to the most high for allowing it to happen this way in this lifetime. That's how I come out, take nothing for granted. And I'm very, very, very humble to the situation. You know what I mean? Because I know where I come from. And I know what I went through. But I know where I'm at right now. You feel me? And I know where I want to go. You see me? So that's what it is. What, what's up with that Ray and Ghost United? I mean, we right here, man. <laughs> the album. Yeah, the, I mean, it's, it's whatever, man. All it takes is beats yeah, and yeah, the there, album. You know what I mean? That was something that we was going to do um, back when we was um, working on Bulletproof Wallets. You know, we always want to, you know, we always run into our fans that's like, you know, they respected our combination factor. So. At one point, we was going to do that album around the time, but we didn't do it. We wound up making it a mixtape and just, you know, just giving the fans something to, to vibe out on. But that wasn't really like, we didn't really get a chance to rock it in the way we wanted to. Is it still a possibility, though, to do a formal? I mean, nah, we, 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 we grown the bigger and better moves right now. So whatever happened back then, if it ain't happened yet, it's like, you know, we just going to keep moving forward. Cuban Links 3. 
Um, I mean, you know, I'm sitting down with my team right now when we decide on what's going to be the next thing. I would love to do it. You know what I mean? It's like a title fight. You know what I mean? If that's what the world want, then I'm going to have to give it to them. You know what I mean? But I, I don't ever want to sit down and make any decision alone. Like, I want it to be in a great way where we all could give it what it need to give. You know what I mean? So we still deciding, though. But I feel like anything that I do right now is just only making me a more stronger MC. You know what I mean? So if it ain't Cuban Links, it's still going to be a classic because that's what I'm that's what I'm going for. You know what I mean? To do three, like I said, who knows? When it's time to announce it, that's going to be the that's going to be what it is.